uh, in my defense, I don't have much experience with uh, web interfaces, REST interfaces, and yeah, web in the general, in yeah, web APIs in general. So please be gentle when I use terms wrong. In any way. So Nick and I, we were um, trying to uh, access the code a database in, a, in the most efficient way possible, and yeah, that was a lot of trial and error. We tried to uh, yeah get actually directly get to the sensor data that we want, not download all sensor data of a certain. Uh, product of a certain uh, satellite data package. We just wanted the data that we need. And yeah, basically our, our access, uh, access process was um, partitioned into three steps. First, we had to do a search query. <coughs> then we did a REST request to see what, what data is in, um, in the products we found. And finally, we, we can Using that information, we can then download the uh, NetCDF files that we need. Okay, the search um, a search request looks something like this. Uh, we just hard coded the username and the password, but it would be really nice to have like an API key that you can use instead. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, um, you can actually not. Uh, uh, make a request like this. Um, I just added some new lines and some spaces so that you can read it better. Uh, so basically you have a lot of uh, key value pairs here and they are all separated by an AND sign. Uh, okay, uh, what are the most more, more important? Uh, uh, yeah, the more important parts you can see down here, those are the, the search parameters. Uh, basically, you can ask for satellite data that is intersecting with a certain polygon. Uh, in that case, yeah, it's the region you want to look into. You can also filter by the dates. Uh, you can actually, um, I just found out that later, you can actually, uh, when you use the CODA data, uh, the CODA web page, you can actually look at the request data on that you produced with your, uh, with your search. And you can also search for the instrument that you're looking for. And the result is uh, a list of, um, it's an XML file that um, contains a list of few IDs and file names that we can then use to get the information about the product. And the product we can request it like this. We have to enter the UUID and the file name. And with this note, Address, we can then get the data that is uh, contained by, in this product. This is basically a list of NetCDF files. And finally, once we know this, the name of the NetCDF file that we want, we can access it uh, <coughs> this way. It's pretty straightforward once you know it, but if you, as long as you don't know it, it's a lot of try and error. Okay, and uh, now Nick is going to tell us something how we can access that, um, how we retrieve that data using a Python API. Okay. Uh, so we created a Python client. Uh, in, uh, in uh, I put it also on uh, on GitHub. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> um, this is our uh, Python client. Um, there are several methods. Uh, I will add uh, later on um, common uh, shared uh, uh, documents. I will uh, just uh, show how I can, we can use it. Uh, so uh, you just can import directly the um, the client. Um,
So uh, we have this uh, client. Maybe and then, so uh, we can uh, query. <coughs> Here is a client. I can query for a set and point, or I can query for a polygon, for a start date, end date, and I can specify the instrument I'm interested. So uh, I have I have here like 16 uh, products that I, I just print here. It's just a uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, I print here the, the summary about this, this ID, file name. And then I I can check the interested product in uh, nodes. So uh, this client will go there and fetch all these uh, NetCDF files and uh, print the updated date. And then uh, you can download it. Uh, automatically you can specify multiple uh, products and specifying the interested uh, measurement in your product. So basically you create a, a local file a local uh, folder with the product name and then the NetCDF file and uh, if file exists, do not download it twice. Uh, this is the basic uh, client. So, so uh, then... Uh, uh, and now we are... Okay. Yeah, so he'll so present how we can building use it. Upon, I hope this doesn't... I think it doesn't take much time. So building upon uh, these two tools, of course, now that we, we first learned how to use the, the API, then we made a uh, basically a, a small package that will be able to download the necessary data if we if we have a given um, longitude and the, uh, if we have basically a, a given a given area that we that we're interested in and now we thought that it would be useful for 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 people to be able to tinker with this data and normally nowadays how people tinker with this data of course is or is often with with python and an, and an ipython notebook so we basically um, wrote something that so we, we wrote an ipython notebook that how do we ah, mirror go to the mirror settings? You so you go. So then we, we built an IPython notebook that basically um, imports this this package that um, this package that can that can load the data. We log into the Coda, um, so we basically authenticate with Coda. Um, we 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 specify our, our region where we're interested in. So we say longitude, latitude. We give two timestamps. So we collect all of the files that that um, that represent data between these timestamps. We give the instrument. And, and we're looking for the coordinates together with a given type of data that we're interested in. Then we download it using the, using the, using the module. Here we download a lot of files. So these can be hundreds of files. We just load them, download them to disk. But then, of course, we're faced with the problem that these files are still pretty big. And if we want to load in all of this array data into our main memory, this will be too much for, for the computer to handle. So basically, then the next part of the script, what it does is that um, it goes through only kind of time point for time point, or uh, file for file. It goes through the the the, G, the positional data, the longitude and the latitude, and um, intersects these array data with the re the rectangle that we had defined first, and saves back for every time point a slice. So just the position within the data that we're in, that we're interested in, and also it creates handles, so basically pointers to the files that we have downloaded, so that later on in our visualization we can basically um, visualize only the, only the, the, the data that, that we were interested in uh, from at the beginning, directly loading them, only the, the relevant slices from, from the NetCDF files that we had downloaded. And then we created a small animation or a small interactive plot. So it, full screen. Full screen. Just maximize it. Yeah. So and then with this small slide, uh, with this small uh, kind of interactive widget, we can then uh, scroll through time points. So now here there are only two time points because at the end, just before presentation, people have been downloading the data like crazy, and the data rate was super slow. So, but the principle here, there can be thousands, <laughs> there can be thousands of time points, and you can seamlessly scroll through them. So basically, this is a, this is actually still a. So here we had a problem that this was kind of a feedback uh, kind of 
um, from us. Somehow that when we when we uh, when we query, query when we have a coda query and we ask for for data sets intersecting this po uh, this this polygon, we get data sets like this that don't fully cover it, and we even get data sets that that don't uh, that don't intersect at all, but that are close by. So, so but assuming that this is that this is working, so we're kind of assuming this, we can scroll through time, and in, in an interactive fashion, we will load just a small bit of data from the big NetCDF files, and we can even kind of we can scroll through different types of data. So this would be this would be a radiance uh, one data, and this would be the altitude, for example, that we get from the position. And then the nice thing for kind of connecting back to the tinkering part, of course, once we have it, we have this data inside of inside of Python. Uh, and also with this with this slice mechanism, we can basically now um, um, just access the data as a as NumPy directs, and we can play around with it. We can we can kind of visualize the stuff that we're actually looking at, and at the same time computing all types of stuff directly. <coughs> on so, and that's basically it. Kind of our, our if we had one more hour, we would have basically uh, taken taken a world map for the beginning of the notebook to be able to just select a rectangle of of the of the area that you're interested in. And then, and then the, the package would basically download all the relevant files, and we would access from within these files only the relevant, the relevant parts of the area. And uh, we think that this might be useful or not, but we will, we will publish it, and then we see if people just have some easier tools.